Welcome to the podcast, where something is amiss, something is a mess, and we'll discuss some things MS, multiple sclerosis. This podcast is meant to tell the stories of those living day to day with MS, from before they were diagnosed, getting that diagnosis, the aftermath, and where they are today in their journey with multiple sclerosis. And now, let's get on with the show. Welcome to Some Things MS. And welcome back, everybody, to the podcast, Some Things About MS, a podcast which I started recently to tell the stories of those living with the disease and those who are supporting those who are living with the disease. And I've got a legend in the Colorado MS biking community with us today, <laughs> uh, Dick Snyder. Uh, he's been doing this a long time. He's been fundraising. Yes, I'm sure he's raised, a, a, a you know, if he's not, he's well over 100,000, but we'll talk about that in a minute. But I appreciate having you on, Dick, to talk about your involvement in what we do here to to raise money and funds and awareness for multiple sclerosis. So thank you for being on. Well, it's my pleasure. I always say, you know, I, the the MS Society has done for, more for me than I've done for them. I am, uh, I've been a top, I've been doing this, this is going to be my 23rd year, mm. uh, except for the first years, I was always a top fundraiser. Uh, way back when we were called Grand Poobahs, but okay. now we're called, uh, top fundraisers. I uh, raised almost 18000 last year. I will soon break the $200,000 uh, marker uh, this year. I haven't really started fundraising yet, but uh, when I do, I yeah. will. I also note that uh, I'm proud to announce that for the first time, uh, in Bike MS Colorado, the Roadkill Warriors will be riding. Awesome. Uh, a new team yeah, is always good to have in, yeah. Where are they based yeah. out of? Uh, Texas? Out of Pittsburgh. 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 Okay. Yeah. Right I, I rode the Pittsburgh ride once. That was the nastiest ride I ever took. It's crazy I, how I, hilly I, Pittsburgh is. Pittsburgh is, oh is a very God. hilly city. They just, yeah, just keep coming at you. Yeah, they that do a, a bike ride there called the thir- the like the 13 something, the 13 hills or it's yeah. like it just, you just go, you ride each of the hills separately. It's just a, a wild experience apparently. Yeah, it is, boy. That was nasty. Mm. And anyway, uh, but yeah, the war. So we're starting the Colorado chapter of the Warriors. Awesome. Uh, I think we're we'll be chapter number five. We have three hundred riders nationally. Awesome. Awesome. Let's let's what's, let's, let's, let's roll, roll back, back a little, back little bit. bit. Okay. And um, let's talk about just real quickly introduce yourself. Other than your bike MS, you know who you are and 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 where you are and. Okay, I don't know if you can see my flashing. Uh, Conehead uh, necklace or not, but let the lights flash. I can't see uh, the flashing, probably, but but hey, I'm imagining. Hey, I'm imagining just take the my word for it, yeah. yeah, yeah. They coneheads give out pretty good swag. I can't can't argue with that. I'd also like to tell everybody that aside from all all Bobby's accomplishments, he's a great graphics guy. He's turned out some really nice stuff. But anyway, okay. where were we? You want to? Oh, about me? Oh, just yeah, just a quick 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 bit about Dick Snyder. Well, okay. I am a Denver native. I was born in 1948. I went to George Washington High School and uh, University of Missouri and University of Colorado. I had a small business for uh, 44 years. I'm retired now. Um, I've been riding, I think I got my first road bike in about 1986. And I've always, you know, better and better road bikes. I'm on a Specialized Athos now, I call it a middling nine thousand dollar bike. It's nice. <laughs> yeah, it's just yeah, yeah. yeah that's- money easy go. Uh it's <laughs> got a it's got a really nice matte teal finish with mm. uh I would call it SRAM uh uh what do they call their electronic wireless shifting? Can't think of what it's called right now. Oh yeah, so I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I like I really like bicycles. So anyway, yeah. uh what else can I tell you? So yeah, I I started riding. Uh, my first ride, I think, was in it's my twenty third year. So okay, so yeah, two thousand one. Yeah. Okay. I uh, just knew a guy that rode all the time, an older guy named Fred Pasternak. He said, "Why don't you ride it?" And I said, "What the heck?" So I just started riding it. Uh, 
I didn't know okay. what multiple sclerosis was. I, I don't think I even knew anybody with multiple sclerosis. But it's uh, such a common story. People, it's like I, I just had a friend who was riding it. They told me it was fun and wanted me to join. I had no idea yeah, yeah. what this was, but I joined and then I got hooked. Yeah, well, the main thing, it's an incredible ride. I mean, it's well, it's been, you know, we've had all kinds of routes. The current yeah. route is, and I'd say this to people interested in signing up, it's easy to ride. But on the other hand, you can motor on that thing. Yeah. Back when I was in really good shape, I was averaging about 20 miles an hour the first day. I was averaging yeah. about 18 miles an hour for the whole ride. I've had some health issues lately. So I don't know what it's going to be like this year, but I'll find out. <laughs> right now, yeah, I got a broken a leg. Different. Yeah. yeah, I got broken well, right. right now. It's a beautiful, the current, the current course is is a beautiful course. Oh, um, yeah. it's been it's been set this way, but it, man, when the weather is nice, oh, um, yeah. you can't beat that ride up looking at the the Rockies off to your left yeah, yeah. or right, depending on which day you're on, and yeah. and uh, hitting that climb at Horse Tooth either at yeah, the yeah. end of the day yeah. one or at the beginning of day two is yeah, just yeah. You know, phenomenal. Oh yeah, yeah, it really is. It's it's a wonderful. Well, it's not just the ride. It's you're at, well, we got, I think uh, we're going to have around 2,000 this year. Uh, we've had as many as 3,000. Yeah. Uh, it's just, a lot, it's a rolling party. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just fun, fun, fun. You make a lot of friends, you meet people. Uh, what else? Oh, and the other thing about it is it's really interesting how uh, you meet well, people that actually have multiple sclerosis. I mean, you, you have a, you have it, yep. but you're, you're, a, you're a robust strong guy um i know ms riders that do triathlons and stuff and then yeah. of course we have people like uh late uh, kelly who was just destroyed by it destroyed yeah. by it you know you just meet all kinds of people with all kinds of different situations that's yeah. what i always find interesting so yeah so you got into it so what hooked you though so so you, you rode your first ride uh fred pasternak hooked you in for the first ride did you did you have any um, um, hesitancy about jumping back in the next year. I was like definitely oh, doing it. Or? Yeah, my first year, I that was the first time I rode a century too. Uh, okay, I some guys I knew uh, said, "Hey, let's go together," and I was just going to take the ride. That was the Royal Gorge ride. Okay, and we used to ride, but anyway, it's a two day ride. Uh, how'd that work? We were rode into. How did that work? The first day, we we got Colorado Springs right. I think that then, I, I never oh, read yeah, that route, but I believe I oh, heard. Okay, yeah, and here's what happened. First day yeah. we get to Colorado Springs. And the next day we ride to uh, Fort Con or uh, not Fort to the Gorge, Canyon to the City. Gorge. Yep. Yeah, and uh, then uh, go over the Royal Gorge, and uh, they bus us all the way back to uh, Highlands right. Ranch High School. Yeah, but the ride's too big; they can't do that anymore. But yeah, that, it's a that lot of tough. logistics. Yeah, yeah. Coming, uh, I'm trying to remember, the approach to the gorge was really steep. I, uh, I pulled a wheelie on my road bike. If you can imagine, that's how I torqued it so bad. I actually pulled the front wheel off. Wow. I was, wow. uh, I was kind of coming up that thing and I, I uh, ran into this one woman who was crying. Uh, oh, no. she, was, she was a little bit overweight. She was uh, at MS, you yeah. know, and it was hot out. So she's had a tough time. She was just in, uh, a bra and, uh, bike shorts and she was mm. she was overheating and she yeah. got off the bike and she couldn't get back in the pedals you know it's mm. tough starting out on if you if you're gonna climb last thing yeah. you want to do is stop yeah so she stopped and i i had to get her clipped back in and mm. it took me a while she was crying and everything else but i got her i got her going again yeah man it's just and, so many uh, people like i said who you know, if you're not careful, you know, we've ridden with people who haven't trained, but you know, in, in the best of circumstances, you know, you can get overwhelmed and, and, uh, yeah. it's, it's nice that it's nice. If it's a Testament, you know, you were there, but you know, if you weren't the next person along, I mean, the, oh, that's yeah. one great thing about this ride is if you're ever stopped on the side of the road, you know, it's like everybody that passes by is checking on you and making sure you're okay. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, we're like, those, are just, those are the folks that are in the ride. Not, not even the, the officials, you know, SAG volunteers, but just, Everybody riding is looking out for each other. That's right. I like to quote uh, West Side Story. You're never alone. You're never disconnected. You're home with yeah. your own. You're yep, always protected. A, the yep. Jets. Anyway. <laughs> that's, and that's taking you back to your like your 60s roots. I was going to say you were an old time hippie, too. So I love your story. Oh, yeah. About yeah. I'm, I'm out I'm trying to get to the Grateful Dead concerts and Stones yeah, concerts. Yeah. And 
Oh, well, I told you about the time I tried to ca cat crash the stones, didn't I? Exactly. Yeah. Up, up at Folsom Field, right? That was the stupidest right? thing I ever did. But yeah. yeah, yeah, I go, I'm a citizen of West of Woodstock Nation, I call it. And uh, yeah. you, my, my friend, are an honorary citizen of Woodstock Nation. I love that kind period of time. Of, Thank you. Yeah, you I'll got take the zeitgeist. It. So, I, uh, uh, I saw the dead and Bob Dylan in Philly in 1989. Great concert yeah. uh, on the, oh, at the that, college. Yeah. Yeah. Dylan and the dead. Yeah. 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 Now I remember uh, hanging out at, to see you at the, uh, what's it? The, the student unions here. What do they call a thing? And uh, anyway, like the quad, the quad. Yeah. What do they call that? Uh, the UMC. And you know, okay. out in that, there's a typical quad for a university, you know, Fountains yep. and people sitting around the steps, and I was just sitting there one day, and I looked across and I said, "That guy looks familiar." Some guy with a beard and long hairs. I said, "Oh my <laughs> God, that's Jerry Garcia." Yeah. yeah, and the whole you know pig pen, all those guys—they they were all they, all they were all there and they hanging out. Yeah, they got a micro, whatever you call those things, you know. And, and he yeah. says, he, he says, "We're playing tonight at the Glen Room Miller Ballroom." And it's free because we love you. That, that was back in the old days, you know. That, that yeah, time. awesome. But yeah, they just showed up and started playing. That was a great show. It went on and on crazy. forever, as do crazy. most did shows. Yeah. Yep. So when you said when you first started, like, what was the fundraising like for you? You know, you know, what was what was your first couple of years of fundraising? What did well, that look like? Yeah, until I, I I got the knack of it, you know. I I think uh, let's see, was so. Too, 2004 was my first year as a top fundraiser. I raised over 4,000. Of course, think about inflation too. But uh, yeah. that year, that year, I became a grand poobah for the first time. Okay. That was that was exciting. That was the ride from hell. I, I wrote an essay on that. I don't know if you read that. Or... <laughs> I think I have read it. Yeah. It's yeah, what nasty yeah. ride. Uh, yeah. It was steep. Uh, there was the big climb. There's a big climb out of, uh, oh no, there's a big climb out of Conifer, fairly long. But then there was this big descent down to, uh, what's it, 105? I can't remember the name of that road. Yeah. And, usually, uh, once, usually there's a big climb, there's a big descent afterwards, which is nice. Oh, yeah, yeah. But then there, I remember uh, coming into, De was it in going into Deckers, out of Deckers? There was like mm. a, about a mile of 6% grade. Oh. <laughs> And yeah. I was on the route. I was on the route committee that year. Okay. I, I was I was responsible for that. I thought, God, I hope nobody <laughs> finds out I'm on the right committee. They probably lose right. Me. Yeah, You're kicking we, your uh, own ass up that hill. Yeah, it's like, what oh am I did I get myself I was, into? I was in great shape then, so I didn't have any time yeah. with it. I had a good time. Yeah. I didn't have any trouble with it, but I was stay I stayed at the Antlers that year in Colorado Springs, and uh, I was getting on the elevator, waiting for it. And there's this lady sitting there crying. She says, I don't think I can make it home. And, oh, and no. I, I gave her a pep talk. I said, yeah, you can make it home. You know, and I talked to her back <laughs> years. I knew she wouldn't make it home. It was all right. They, they sagged a <laughs> lot of people that day, I'll tell you. Yeah. Mm. I, I remember coming back uh, when it's after lunch when it was really hot. And I saw, it's real funny, there's a tree, not a big tree, but, you know, wide enough to project a column of shade. And yeah. standing, there are all these people lined up in the in the shade, you know, <laughs> one after another. <laughs> that was murder. It, was, it wasn't murder for me. I had a great, you know, I had a great ride. But yeah. uh, oh, and there was a there was a misting tent, the King Super's misting tent. You uh, that was on the first day, I think. Okay, I can't remember it was, but you rolled in there, and they had this big tent. You went inside, and, you know, they had misters like you have in the. Produce yeah. department and these ladies yeah. walking back and forth hanging out handing out watermelon okay <laughs> that was yeah. nice but the i thought first ride know, i did was in virginia and it was a hundred and over a hundred degrees oh and God. then there was also humidity, humidity and yeah, very yeah. similarly i think every stop had a misting tent or a swimming pool with hoses going one of the stops was at a fire department i remember and they had they were just hosing people down because it was just so hot and oh, yeah, yeah. you know, just you're just you know sweating out every bit of water you're drinking in between stops, and because it's the humidity on top of that, you know, and, and Virginia was just you know it was it was just yeah, probably yeah. the worst overall like two day weather event. Although the, a couple of years ago when we had the rain, that really bad rain here, that was not oh yeah yeah either. 
Yeah, I got hypothermia. Yeah. I didn't even. I got hypothermia home. as well. Yeah, I'm just prone yeah, to that just, more than anything. So. Yeah, I, I've had hypothermia. Hypothermia bike's scary. You don't realize you're becoming hypothermic. I just didn't know it. I just scary. got off and I started shaking and I couldn't stop shaking. Yeah, like, yeah. I didn't know when so I was on the bike. I, once I got off. Yeah. Well, you know that's the thing about hypothermia is it. Uh, it kind of cuts the blood flow to your brain to keep your organs yeah. warm. And then yeah. you can't think, which is a double whammy. Because once you, you can't think, you start making bad decisions. You bet. Yeah. Yeah. I remember well, I, on a, well, go ahead. I was going to get back on the bike. after I, I made it to, I, I, I left the lunch stop that day and it was pouring rain like five minutes yeah. after yeah, I left yeah. the lunch stop. Right, right. And it was on a stretch. It was on that stretch where there's just no shelter. There were no right. cars coming by and it was just pouring rain. Like I was riding through inches of rain Yeah, and I, uh, I made it to the rest stop. You know, it's probably 10 miles to the, you know, somewhere yeah. between eight to 12 miles, but you know, yeah. and I made it there and they immediately put me into a, a, a crazy thing, but it was the warmest place into a porta potty. It was like, just go into yeah. a porta potty. It's warm. Yeah. It's insulated. You'll stay warm in there. Yeah. And I, it was true. I was really warm. I got out and I, and I was like, I'm getting back on my bike. And she's like, no, no. It's no. Like, you know, you, she looked at me. She's like, "No, you're going to get in that van over there, and they're going to take you back to the finish because you, you, I, like you said, I wasn't in a right mind to make the decision to get back on the bike at that moment. I was probably riding. I, I remember I was with riding with Donna. I was probably riding with him mm. too. I can't remember anymore. But uh, yeah, I was on a camping. Yeah, Miri, my wife and I, we were, we went backpacking, and it it was uh, you know we we're up at about eleven thousand feet. And it was a pretty vigorous hike, and of course that. We didn't know, you know, we were in cotton t-shirts and everything, and yeah. the wind's blowing on our face. And we got up there to the this lake, uh, Heart Lake or something, and I was able to set up the tent. I thought I think I'll make a fire. And I went out and I looked at the matches, but I couldn't remember how to start light a match. Wow. And I said, Oh, yeah. I'm in trouble. But the yeah. good point was we had zipped together sleeping bags. And what you do when you have hypothermia is the two of you take off all your clothes and hold each other tight. So yeah, that's not bad. Get, get, that, <laughs> get that body heat going. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Where so let's are. go back to fundraising. So, so you, you, you built yourself up pretty quickly. What, what would you give as like the top three fundraising tips for folks that are watching? Because you've, you've been doing this a long time and maintained yeah this high level for so long, what would be your top three tips to get well, people motivated to fundraise? One thing about my situation is I don't have any big donors. I, I have a few guys yeah. that give me a thousand bucks. My median donations, uh, somewhere around, uh, 75 bucks or something. Yeah. 60, but I can't remember. It's somewhere between 60 and 75. Yeah. And, uh, I have about 200 donors. And what I mainly do, is I write letters mm, okay. and email them to people. I've got a whole series of letters I write. And by the way, if anybody else wants to try my method, get in touch with me. I'll be glad to help you. Do you, yeah. is, do you, is this snail mail still, or do you, are you now doing oh, email? No, no, it's all email. No, I okay. have snail mail in years. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. I just keep emailing people and I say, donate and you won't receive any emails. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> if you want to see less of me. Yeah. Yeah. You want to get rid of me. Donate. <laughs> Yeah. Do so you anyway, use the platform still at all too to, to fundraise or just straight email? Well, you know, I do post on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I know you have a pretty good good uh, presentation on Facebook. What else do I do? Uh, that's mainly it. Yeah. Okay. And so just yeah. over the course of the years, you just keep adding people in. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. You yeah. email everybody you can think of. Yeah. Everyone. And what's surprising, you'd be surprised who comes back and say, you know, yeah. people you barely knew, you just have them, let's say, yeah, you know, my uh, my so-and-so, my aunt so-and-so or whatever has MS, and I, I'm really glad that you're uh, you're doing this. Yeah. And so let's, let's talk about that for just a second, because I, I hear a lot about, uh, well, I'm, I'm afraid to email people. I don't want to offend anybody. Like, you know, what's the, what's this, what's that one thing to get you over the hurdle that says, you know, it's okay, yeah. you know, just. You know, what, you know, how do you answer you just that? Send emails out. If people don't like it, you take them off the list. That's all. Yeah. Okay. And you know, a I lot of people, I've got a lot of people on the list, probably 800 people, something like that. Okay. Something like that. I don't even know how many, but, and then, you know, so I only have that, you know, I got 200 donors. That's pretty good. But uh, yeah, 25% rate is great. Yeah. I mean, you know, a lot of people make all just, yeah. micro donations. 
Yeah, yeah, micro donation could be that a lot of people, you know, I don't know, I don't know what happens to these emails. You know, every once in a while I get a really uh, angry note that says, "Don't ever email me again." That's fine, just take them off. And yeah. perhaps you know, other people just see the emails and they delete them. I don't know what happens, but it works. Yep. yep. Um, yeah, they, I think the key is you know not being afraid to a couple things you mentioned. If you've got a story, tell the story. Tell I've the got story. MS. My yeah, aunt's yeah, got MS. My brother's got MS. Here's oh how to God. fix them. You know, here's how your money can can help them. And then, like you said, if if you know, if somebody asks me to take them off, I you know, if, if people don't donate, I don't. You know, if I meet them, I don't say, "Hey, you didn't donate last year." Uh, you know, everybody's got their own path in life when it comes to this. You know, filling fill, filling you know, ropic you know, uh, you know, portion of their yeah. what they do, and and you got to you know let them you know let them manage that and and appreciate when they give you something. Well, the another thing I was thinking about, another thing about MS is that's kind of weird is it pops up in strange places, like there are areas of the country where it's very, very prevalent and nobody yeah. knows why. And you're kind of got a double whammy. You come from one, Virginia, yep. DC area is high and in Colorado it's high. So yep. you and I was of, diagnosed here. Yep. Oh, you were. Okay. Yep. But, but right. moved. it was just soon after I moved here too. It was probably just a couple of years after I moved here that I started having symptoms. How long have you been here? Uh, since 1999. Oh, okay. So you've been here a long time. Yeah, yeah. I'm right. I'm almost a native. Almost a native, right? Yeah. So anyway, yeah, that's that's kind of odd. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, you know, like I said, I I know the people that are racing and triathletes that have MS. And of course, the worst case is Kelly Walker. Yeah. So let's uh, talk a little bit about that because that's an impactful team you were on. Yeah. Um, you you got you made your way to to a team called the Sugar Bees, and they've been doing right. this a while, and and they uh their entire um, team was dedicated to uh, a mem member of their family, um, you know, Tim and Eric um, are brothers. And it was their sister, Kelly, who had MS um, and they rode for her and the entire family was involved. They sponsored a, a, uh, a, um, a rest stop, the lunch stop for you know, yeah, as long as I can stop. remember when I first started. Um, yeah. The BP and, you know, and yeah. So talk yeah. a little bit about that team and about Kelly's. Cause well, okay. Like, so uh, I think my, probably my, was so I started to the probably the second year I was out riding. I ran into a lady named Marsha Macro. Uh, Marsha is a legend. Oh no, I know. I had a friend named Mick Flack. Anyway, I I I had a bunch of people that I just had happened to know that were on the sugar bees. At one time, everybody was on the sugar bees, right? Of another direction. Yeah. But, uh, so uh, the kind of the the sugar bees are f founded by. The Walker family, uh, Tim and Betty Walker, the parents, the brothers are Eric and Tim Jr. And then they had a daughter, a phenomenal daughter named Kelly. Kelly was an all-state basketball player. Mm. Uh, so she was a brilliant uh, student. She was, uh, I think she was a doctoral level at, uh, psychology at uh, CSU when she was diagnosed. And uh, it was, I think, close to right before her wedding mm. or she was engaged to a guy named, uh, what was his name? Jack. Uh, can't think Jack's last name now. But anyway, uh, Jack's a, he's a really strong cyclist. And mm. anyhow, she just uh, deteriorated and deteriorated. She, uh, at she the wedding, she couldn't even walk. Form, right? What's yeah. that? She had yeah. a progressive yeah. form of MS, yeah. Yeah, Kelly couldn't even walk. By yeah. the time she got married, and so she was in a wheelchair the whole time, and she just, you know, her condition. You know, I used to see her, I see her all the time, not free, at least once or twice a year, and you could just see the de deterioration till the end. She was, her face was all distorted, and she just, it was terrible. But she had a good spirit, and we had a lot of fun talking about it and everything. Yeah. Uh, at the end, on top of it of all, she got breast cancer, mm. <laughs> and uh, I don't know what killed her. It was the MS or the breast cancer, but uh, she had a good sense of humor when she wanted to, they told her she had to, if she wanted to go on chemo and she said, well, can we do it virtually? <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> that funny. Weird. But I, I don't know what killed her, but she was in bad shape, but yeah. she, she hung in there and you know, she was always good spirits and you'd run into her at the rides and everything. Yeah. And, I, I, I read, I, I, I've talked to her at the rides on a oh, number yeah. of occasions. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, 
So and then and then another big team that you were on um, that unfortunately disbanded, but you know some of the folks stayed in the community, others didn't. But the the yeah, high so, knees were another big team that yeah, I was, was a raw high knee for a long time. That was yeah. the ultimate team. We had about 140 riders. Yeah, they were There's, one of the bigger teams outside of like uh, some of the corporate uh, teams now. Corporate teams, yeah, it was a big team. But yeah, the high knees had raised about four hundred thousand a year. Yeah, uh, no, it's huge. Our leader was Jennifer Sales. Yeah, Jennifer. I met oh Jennifer is on the route committee that year of the ride from hell. That's where I met her. <laughs> and uh she's very wealthy and she has this beautiful house out uh kind of over by Grandview High School. And okay. she's had this really amazing party before the you know, catered party, yeah, before the ride and everything. So she put a lot of her heart and money. What a this. crazy thing to have to manage. It's almost like a small, you know organization in its own 170 yeah. to 200 riders a year no, yeah, 140. Managing all that yeah, yeah that's yeah. that's that's yeah uh, that's wild you know to, to 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 manage that successfully year in and year out um you know really kudos to somebody to be able to pull that off for as long as she yeah. did she's an ms legend yeah uh, totally yeah. like i said that's, that, if there's you know there's a legendary status or there are you know a few people up there in there um, well, you know, everybody says, well, you can never duplicate the Heine's experience. And I say, yeah, you can. The Coneheads do it. Yeah. You know, well, you guys the Coneheads have done a great job at cultivating a team that that is supportive and, and is really, you know, it's 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 a high impact group. I mean, every, almost everybody yeah. in the group raises above average funds. Oh, like yeah, when I look yeah. at the data, our team is always number one in per rider. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, fundraising because we just have so many people doing it at a high level. Uh, it's awesome to have that kind of passion and, and, um, and uh, commitment um, for some, you know, most of them with people, you know, who like yourself didn't have a personal connection, just got, got, you know, got involved and, and remained involved, which is just, you know, awesome. Yeah. And then you get to know everybody and you had, then you do have personal connections that, you know, because yeah. you become friendly with people is like, so by the time where you are, you have plenty of connections that, you know, oh, yeah. that have MS. Um, yeah, yeah. you know, they may not be in your family, but, but they're, yeah. you know, they're, they're in your, your circle, um, yeah. which again, it, it helps keep you grounded on why you're doing it. Oh yeah. Yeah. And even, you know, all these celebrities you read about like Christina Applegate. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Funicello. I can't remember. Those are the two that stick out in my head. Yeah. Annette Funicello was like an early celebrity. Uh, uh, Richard Pryor had MS. Uh, Annette Funicello know. was an early person who had MS. Yeah. Um, yeah. Most recently, Christine Applegate was, a, she's been a big one. There's another gal named Jamie Lynn Sigler who was on The Sopranos. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Jamie. Yeah, yeah. I forgot about her. Uh, but yeah, there, but, it, but a, there, a lot more people in the, in the celebrity world are talking about it now. And Christina yeah. Applegate has been very vocal. Because oh, for yeah. her, hers has been very impactful. I mean, she once when, when she had the uh, initial attacks, um, it's it really affected her life, you know, uh, you know considerably. You know, she has a podcast now as well, and, and is open and talking about the struggles around dealing with the disease um, because it hits everybody so differently. Like you said, mm -hmm. I I've been lucky in in that I've had this twenty years, and yeah. there are some days where I don't want to do anything, but most days I'm able to do a lot, and I feel. I am blessed because of that. And yeah. it, it motivates me to get out and do what I do to fundraise because I know there there's that it has an impact to be able to provide medication and research to help those who are struggling. And, you know, who knows where I will be in two years. Maybe I'm going to need some assistance that is going to be provided not. by the fundraising I'm doing today. So yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's an important thing. And like I said, once again, nobody can tell that you have MS, you're muscular, That's you're robust, you know, you're, and you're bright that's and a, active. That's a common theme for yeah. most people. Even if you're not muscular, if you're walking yeah. around and yeah. and you and you just have a typical dad bod or whatever, you know yeah. that yeah. you just it's just not. It's, it's one of those invisible diseases. A neurological disease, mm -hmm. lots of times, is invisible, and you don't know what a person is doing or struggling with um, because it's not just just not as prevalent as as you know some other things. You know, right. where you might right. you might be able to tell. Sure. Um, Trying to think of uh, anything else about bike MS that that you know. I mean, one of the things that I think this this affects you. I know it affects you know a lot of people on our team, um, but we talked about it. Uh, we've talked about it before, but just the event hangover. Like when this is such a oh, fun yeah. event, you know, you know to shill for yeah. it for a minute. It's such a fun event that when it ends on day two, it's it really is a letdown. You feel like man, well, yeah, yeah, you really you feel over for another year. Yeah. Deflated. I know what you mean. That's why I always try and carpool with somebody so I don't yeah. have to go home. 
<laughs> it's like yeah, keep keep the keep the fun going as long as you can. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, uh, um, luckily, it comes right before July Fourth. You know, your summer really starts to accelerate. Yep. We're uh, what are we? Oh, we're going we're going to Puerto Vallarta. Oh, and nice. I'll be back a week, and then we're going to do the MS, and then yep. uh, I don't know what comes after that. You know, want to get have you done it? Have you done any passport rides? I know you've ridden Wyoming, but what about just outside two. of this area? Just Pittsburgh and Wyoming. Okay. okay. Pittsburgh. I do. Do we talk about that's the nastiest but, ride ever? Yeah, you're saying how the crazy hills there. I've done Virginia. It's probably the same different thing. rides in Virginia, and then one in Maryland. Um, maybe two in Maryland actually. Yeah. Yep, two in Maryland and two in Virginia, different routes, and then uh, the Colorado. I never got to do Wyoming. It just timing never worked out. Yeah. And now that one's not operating more, but I'd love to do more passport. Ride. I'm actually doing the Virginia ride this year with, uh, with a team, uh, somebody that's on my team, uh, is, has a friend who's in Richmond and that's oh, where yeah. the ride is going to be at. So I'm going to be doing that one. When is the ride? That's June 1st. Oh, okay. Now that's too, yeah. I'd like to do another one of those rides. Uh, if I'm just fine. Yeah. Going that way. I know uh, we're definitely, gonna... we talked about getting a bunch oh, of yeah. the, the grand poobahs together and, and going around and, and you because we can get our passport right, going around and doing some fun rides Seems like uh where we, we were going to go to wyoming one year and then it was oh that was the covid year though yeah we were all organized yep. to go to wyoming and then, yep yep and then i, I just it's it where, whatever date it was falling on happened to fall within a uh like time when i oh it might have been it, was it later in the year like in august or yeah September? wyoming's later in the summer yeah, I think every it, it fell in, in a time when I, I do acting in the fall and and I think oh, it was always right. it was always on a weekend that I couldn't get away. Um, yeah, yeah. Which is the same for we've got a, we've we've had, we've had a team riding in Seattle now for a couple of years. It's grown up to about 20 people and uh yeah, it's on Deception Pass. It's a beautiful ride. I just, yeah, I, it, I, it I, just I, happens I, to always fall on the weekend that I'm doing my musical, so uh, I haven't been able I, to make it up. I'm not looking at the only thing it rains there a lot. It, it 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 rains yeah. and and by the way the the overnight is only camping so you can't get you can't get a nice yeah. hotel so yeah. you got to be prepared to hit hit a tent after the ride which yeah, isn't for everybody yeah right, right. <laughs> no but a beautiful ride I mean if you've probably driven oh. or you've seen Deception Pass a beautiful area and yeah 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 well, um, gee, cool uh, yeah that Wyoming ride used to go by uh, Devil's Tower but then they changed the oh route. yeah. That's yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah that's a different, different country that. up there. Yeah, yeah, I really like Devil's Tower. Yeah. What was that the movie uh, Close uh, Encounters? Close Encounters. Right? Yeah, yeah I, I've yeah. driven that area a number of times, I, but it'd be really cool to ride up to it. Yeah, yeah, but they don't quit doing it, so it doesn't matter. Yep. So um, what else do we have to talk about? Let's see. Yeah. I think I'm, I'm at the end of my, unless you have something else top of mind, I've got a couple of, I call them fast, fast questions, just some rapid yeah. fire I'll ask you a couple of quick questions just for fun as, as to we, as we wrap this up. Okay. When you're on your ride, uh, do you like goo or gummies? Goo or gummies? Hmm. Yeah. Not, goo. Not, not the after hour gummies, but the regular, you know, energy gummies. <laughs> yeah, no, I, 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 I like, well, the problem with goo, it's so sweet. Sometimes it makes you nauseous. Yeah, so you I gotta, agree. You got to get it down with water. Yeah. I like goo. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a gummy. I, I've, I've been liking those gummies. You chew them up. It's, it's like I'm having candy on the ride. So I, I go with the good yeah, that's gummies. that's true. I can see your point there. I just, for some reason, I take goo. I, I'm mainly Cliff Bars. Okay, yeah. Yep, they're Cliff good. Bars are real food. They they pack a lot of Yeah. A lot of good the, stuff old, the old style Cliff Bar, the one that's like the the, the paste or the newer Cliff Bars? Well, no, the new ones. Yeah, those okay. old ones. Yeah, those ones were like that is like eating like taffy or something. They were just so oh, you know, God. compact. No, that those yeah. those are power bars. Yeah. Those yeah. Oh, power awesome. bars. Yeah, you're right. Those yeah, are. Those, yeah, you're right. Yeah, no, Cliff bars. They're they're nice and substantial. Yeah, you're and, right. Uh, you should pass All right. How many? Second Go question. Ahead. How many how many bike jerseys do you think you own? Well, right now I've got at least twenty. I I just donated twenty five bike jerseys to the to the society. Okay, I was gonna say you probably in your lifetime you probably had hundreds. Oh my but, god, yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. I got one of those big white trash bags, you know, that you and I filled yeah. them. The whole thing was full of jerseys and we gave them to Erica and we went through them. But you know, I had all these jerseys because you know, if you're top fundraiser, you get you, you usually top every time you got a yep. team one and then you get a top fundraiser jersey, yep. and then you get ones from other places, you know, and next thing you know, yep. Yeah, so I, I yeah. probably right get now, a passport. 
I get a top fundraiser. I get the bike one oh, yeah. in and I ride with MS jersey. So I get four a year basically. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, I have yeah, some, yeah. Uh, I've, I saved some, some of my favorites. I've got that one uh, Coneheads jersey from about two years ago. Three mm -hmm. years ago, mm -hmm. I can't remember. And then I've yeah. got a really nice raw hiney one. It's blue and mm -hmm. green with the bull, you know. And Yeah, the, they had the, that bull that was their mascot or their lo logo. Icon, yep. And uh, this is the old Warriors jersey. The new one's really pretty. I think I sent. It. Did you see it? I you sent a picture video? of. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, sent a picture. I'll, really I'll, 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 when I post this out, I'll put a picture in the uh, in the comments so people can see it. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, oh, and then I've got a. Well, it's not MS, but it's my favorite. It's. Uh, hang on, Emma. Hi. Oh, come on in. Oh, it's Oliver. What are you doing? I am doing a podcast. So here are my grandchildren. All of grandkids. So I say hi. You? You. Hi. Yeah, okay, I'll be right out, you guys. What's the podcast for? Uh, for the the bike MS ride. Okay. Yeah, Oliver, when he was a baby, he was kind of the the bike the the Heine mascot. Oh, fun! He doesn't celebrity that. in the midst. I'm gonna make sure we yeah, have that in the podcast notes. <laughs> I remember when he was a baby, I took him. I took him to the uh, the the Heine. Uh, barbecue and nice. he was, you know they're cute and I, they passed him all around and everybody i didn't even know uh -huh. what uh -huh. everybody wanted to pick him up and the next year i took a real nice picture of him with the heine decal on and everything so he was kind of the heine mascot when he was little right on all right my last question uh best rolling stone song oh god well you know i have a, a oh my god you know well now let's see you know, I, I, you know about me and the Midnight Rambler. Yep. When I went to Fort Collins with Crazy Mary and yep. tried, you know, yeah. So that that's got a lot of appeal, emotional appeal to it. Mm -hmm. There's too many. I mean, you got uh, too many. Jumping Jack Flash. You can't always get what you want. I think my favorite one is I used to love her, but she's all over now. But it's all yep, over now. Good. I, 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 I like some of the deeper. I love Wild Horses. That's one of my favorite oh, songs. Oh, that's a nice song, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they've got a great catalog for sure. Well, as they're prolific, 60, what, they've been yeah. doing this for 60 years? Uh, they've got to be, for an original, I mean, they're not original, original, because, you know, uh, Watts has passed away. They've Other people yeah, have moved yeah. out. But, yeah, but yeah. that's a pretty original group still yeah. doing this for, I think, as long as anybody's ever done it at this level. They're still doing it. And doing it really well. I mean, Mick Jagger is 81 or 82. Yeah, yeah. Right? But he's, he's, he's in better he's shape looked, than we are. I say he's in better shape than we are. Yeah. Is, yeah, yeah, this yeah, guy. He's, wild horses. What after wild horses? What's up? Do, 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a good tune. Yeah. Fun. Can't you hear me knocking? Yeah. yeah that, yep. Don't you come after the wilds? Yeah, yeah. 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 They're great. I mean, I've been listening. My my mom bought me a copy of Out of Our Heads. When okay. I, in, 1963 or something yeah and I, I mean i've just been hooked on the stones i i inherited since. my parents copy of let it bleed so that was my first oh, stones album yeah. that is the absolute best i still yeah, think that's album. They ever yep. Did. Yeah. yep. and then so i then i got the first stone album that i got was um the uh was start me up whatever album that i did oh, that, that that's cool, yeah. i can't yeah, remember that album, yeah. yeah that was like a late late eighties, early, early eighties yeah. album. Yeah. That right. was a, that was a tattoo, tattoo you, the album's called. Tattoo you. Okay, good. Yeah. yeah. But it yeah. had start me up on it. That was, that was the big hit from the album. A nice song. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I think I'm, I still think I like, I think I like all over now the best. Yeah. As much, cool. But I mean, how can you say what's best? You know, you got, uh, yeah. no a subjective question. Always, always top of mind. Yeah. Uh, what else? Moonlight mile. Uh, uh, there's just so many. I mean, uh, yeah, there's like just, you said, yeah, so many. Yeah, love, love, yeah, love watching those guys perform. They're, they're like I said, so good. One of one of the best halftime shows. I mean, yeah, they just have done it at a high level for so long and so energetic. Yeah. I mean, Mick Jagger is so energetic, and uh, and just you know what a great great group of musicians. Well, cool, I'd man. Say, uh, I appreciate having you on. I, I really do. Oh, wow. It's been 40 minutes. Holy cow. I know. Right. It goes That's by great. quickly when, you, when you're chatting about cool stuff. Um, so, yeah, really appreciate hearing your side of, of how you've supported the uh, the society and, and folks yeah. living with MS. Um, you know, we appreciate what you're doing. You know, $200,000 of the course of your fundraising. That's incredible. 
Uh, awesome. Yeah, okay. man, take care. Rock on. I'll, 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 Rock I'll on, see you man. soon on the road. Yeah.